What's up guys and welcome back to the G-Red Show. I'm G-Red. It's some big news for Barcelona. It's good news and it looks like if Barcelona can promise Xavi these three things, it looks like Xavi could potentially stay as the manager for Barcelona for next season. We'll also touch on some of these transfer rumors and if it'd be a good idea to bring some of these players in the club and who should leave Barcelona for next season. So apparently Xavi could reportedly stay at Barcelona if Laporta promises him these three things. Number one, no key departures this summer. Number two is strengthening the squad with players that Xavi wants. And number three is signing either Kimmich or Zubamendi and then Bernardo Silva. So first I want to touch on the whole Bernardo Silva aspect because originally I did make a video, feel free to watch if you haven't seen it, about why Bernardo Silva to Barcelona is probably not the best idea. Now it wasn't obviously just the match against Real Madrid and Man City, Bernardo Silva was great. It, it's just the more and more I watch him and the more and more I watch Barcelona and the team in general, he would fit almost perfectly in Barcelona. And a lot of this depends on, I think, if they get rid of Rafinha. But Barcelona could desperately use more depth in their midfield because you know, you just know Pedri's going to get injured sometime next season. It's just inevitable at this point. Frankie seems to get injured some point in the season. Even if it's missing a few matches, you know, you kind of have to expect that. Gabi's going to be coming off his injury. And I desperately hope Barcelona isn't pushing him back onto the pitch and playing him a lot, which I don't think they will. They need to ease him into it. So right off the bat, there's three players that you really have to, for sure, two of them, Pedri and Gavi, keep an eye on for injuries. Gundogan, luckily, we don't have to worry about him, but you still can't be too cautious. And then Christensen, obviously, I don't think he's a CDM that we desperately want, but he's been shown where he can be beneficial. But nonetheless, having Bernardo Silva as an option for the midfield would be fantastic. And then he'd also be someone that you could swap in and out and start and he could split time with Lamine Yamal, who I don't think should be starting every match, and he could learn from Bernardo Silva. It's going to give him time to rest and learn, and I think that could be very beneficial. So, Again, if Barcelona is able to afford it, 50, 60 million, I think they could probably get Kimmich for around 40, 50, maybe 60 million too. So hypothetically, 120 million for Kimmich and Bernardo Silva. It is a lot, but if they sell some of these players and depending on their sponsor for next season, I don't know if it's been officially announced, they could be getting extra money if it's Puma. If they can find a way to make it work, I think I would do it. Now moving into Rafinha, because I think he actually plays a very important role in whether or not they bring in Bernardo Silva, because it looks like reports are saying that Barcelona just turned down, it didn't say who, but there's a bid from England that was $64 million, 60 million euros, but Barca turned it down because of his improved form. And if they were to consider it, it looks like Laporta's board chose to pass because they want a price for Rafinha for up to $85 million, 80 million euros. So, you know, with his form being fantastic as of lately, if this is something that he can consistently play at, if Rafinha is like this for 70% of the time, then I would keep Rafinha. He is showing that in these big matches, as of lately, he's someone we can count on. We'll see against PSG, and if Barcelona progresses to the semifinal, we'll see how he does in those two matches in the semifinal. This could be a really huge determining factor if Barcelona wants to keep Rafinha or not. So I would like to keep him if he was this consistent, because he is dangerous, and he's beating guys with his pace. He makes good runs. He spreads the field. So there is a lot of upside to Rafinha, and honestly, I think he's great on the left wing too, which kind of brings me into my next point. I think Barcelona should get rid of either Ferran Torres or Joao Felix. And as of lately, I'm leaning towards getting rid of Ferran Torres. He's never someone that I thought was going to come in and be that main person, a main starting player. He's not good enough to be a starter for Barcelona. He's always going to be someone that at the end of the day should come off the bench. If Barcelona never had financial issues, this wouldn't have been a major signing for Barcelona. I don't know how much they could get for him, but I would consider selling him if they keep Rafinha because he can play on the right or the left. He's fast. He starts. Ferran Torres doesn't. And then if you bring in Bernardo Silva, your left wing is Joao Felix, Gavi, Pedri, and Rafinha that you can rotate in that position. Maybe Bernardo Silva, if you want to play him as a left winger, I think he's better in the center midfielder as a cam or a right winger. But then as the right wingers, you have Lamine Mall, Bernardo Silva, and Rafinha. So you have a lot of different options. So I think a lot of the Bernardo Silva aspect, I think it relies on Rafinha. Now, Kimmich and Zubamendi, I always kind of gravitated toward Kimmich. Um, I watched Bayern a lot more. I'm not as familiar with Zubamendi's game, but as I've watched this season, I think he's a good player. 
player and he's promising. So either of those players I think would be fine. I think if Kimmich comes in, that's more of a someone that probably would start right away rather than Zubamendi might be working his way in, which is completely fine. But it gives you a lot of depth because if you run a 4-2-3-1, you can put Kimmich or Zubamendi and then Frankie de Jong probably could start as your two holding midfielders. You can put Christensen there. If you had to, you could put Gundogan there. You might even be able to put Pedro or Gavi, although I don't think that's their strongest suit. And then you could put Bernardo Silva as a cam. There's so many options, but my only concern is assuming everyone stays healthy for the majority of the season, which, you know, I'm going to be optimistic and say if it's possible and Barcelona hypothetically gets Kimmich and Bernardo Silva, you're going to have those two players, Kimmich and Bernardo Silva, Gundogan, Christensen, Frankie de Jong, Pedri, Gavi, and Fermin Lopez. Eight players for basically only three of those can start in your midfield. So you're going to have some fantastic talent on the bench. So I'm just interested to see what does Barcelona do? Who do they play and who starts? That's my biggest concern with bringing in these other players, because if they bring in these two players, you're going to have to really think about the formation you play. And these players are going to have to, you know, be well aware that they're going to be splitting time. It's it's a fact. They're going to have to split time. It'd be weird not seeing Gundogan and Frankie de Jong starting every single match. It would be very, very strange. So assuming Barcelona signs Bernardo Silva and Kimmich or Zubamendi, what would they run? What would be the best formation? And if there's three in the midfield, who would your starting three be? Let me know what you guys think down below. Now, last, you know, when we talk about Barcelona moving forward, I do have a couple other concerns. And my main concern is Lewandowski. Most likely, you know, one, maybe two more seasons. Who is his replacement? I can't judge Vitor Roque because he doesn't play really at all for us to really judge his performances because he has little to no confidence, little to no playtime. And until he's playing consistently, we really can't give a fair judge to how he's been playing. There's been the rumors about Barcelona potentially going after Erling Holland in 2025. I don't think that's the best fit for the club. I really don't think Holland's a great footballer. And we're seeing it in every big game. He's getting shut down. I would rather see Barcelona go after someone like Julian Alvarez. But I also, in another video, I stated that I think signing Paulo Dybala could be a great move for Barcelona too, because he's extremely cheap. You can get him for about 10 million euros, get him on a lower salary. He can start, he can come off the bench. I think he would know that he wouldn't be coming in expecting to start. He can play as a winger. He can play as a cam. He can play as a center forward. If you want to play two up top, he can play one of those two forwards. So I think that's another great addition that Barcelona could get for a very, very cheap price. And my only other concern with Barcelona, Barcelona is their defense. I don't have an issue with who they have. My issue is mostly Koundé. I've grown very fond of Koundé as a right back. And if he can learn to kind of how Joao Cancelo gets very involved in the attack, if Koundé can follow suit a little bit, that would help Lamine Yamal a lot. Because whenever you see Joao Cancelo, he's always out on the left wing, helping with the attack, helping the left winger. And that could really be beneficial. And I also think Koundé, he plays really well as a right back, whether he wants to be there or not. And I just think Kabarsi and Arujo, they're the future moving forward. He probably sees that. And to be honest, I don't see him going to a better club. I don't know why he'd want to go take a step back and join a club like Manchester United or Chelsea. Not dissing those clubs, but at this moment in time, they're a step down. I would think he'd want to play at one of the bigger clubs in the world and have a chance to be very, very competitive in their league and the Champions League moving forward. So I hope he stays because with Balde back and they have Hector Fort. Cancelo if they sign him, Kabarsi, Arujo, Christensen, Kunde. you have a lot to work with. And Barcelona, honestly, if they can make two or three of these changes for next season, they're going to be so successful moving forward. And I guess we'll see about Xavi as well. I feel like there's been a lack of communication about who might replace Xavi. And I think a lot of it's they're doing so well. Everyone's kind of expecting Xavi to stay. Part of me thinks you can still find a better manager, but depending on how the season ends, could be huge. And I wouldn't be opposed to seeing Xavi stay. I have no idea who I'd want to see replace him. So I wonder if this stuff happens in Barcelona at least makes the semifinal in the Champions League. I wonder if he would consider staying. So let me know what you guys think down below about all these different topics. If you guys made it this far, I appreciate you guys watching and supporting the channel. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe. And I hope to see you guys back here next time on the G Retro.